Hello everybody. So apparently there's no audio when I added that clip, but oh well. So, hope you enjoyed it anyways. Pulling up chat here. As you guys can read in the title, it uh, is Velocity Water Block. Oh, that's really loud, so we're going to have to change that. Oh, just kidding. Somebody su subscribed. We have to be loud about that. Thank you. Let me see who it was. I will say your name. I promise. Oh, is it just Lightning Man? He subscribed once again. Not just Lightning Man. The Lightning Man, I guess. But, moving on. Thank you, like I said. We've got uh, some blocks to install tonight. So, let me just switch over to that. You guys don't need to look at me. At least not that much. So, where did the other chat window go? Okay, here we go. Morning, guys, says Holden Man. What's up? Okay. Yeah, the intro shot was, was fun. To little, I just put that together today, but the audio was cool. If you want to check it out on Facebook, I put it up there, and it's got everything. So, I didn't get any shots today, though, of the RGB. And before I actually, you know, was getting ready here, I wanted to test it out because I want to show you guys tonight, but it was too good to turn off. Like, I actually think this is some of the best RGB lighting in a block yet, at least for just a CPU block. I forget what the, I think they said like 24 LEDs around here. So uh, I just have it connected up with a cable mod thing. So like, they're not addressable, but you can sit here and like, you can change it to whatever you want and stuff with the, I forget if EK has a controller or not, or you can plug it into your board. It's just 12 volt RGB, so you need a 12 volt RGB header. But uh, I really like how that looks. So I'll be using that for sure. And Hanks will be using that. Because first, I will be installing it on uh, my uh, X99 test bench here. I have two of these blocks. I've got Hank's gear right over here, if you can see. But first, we're going to start with the X99 board, because it's easy. And that's the way we do things around here. Boo, says Starkiller. Garrett is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to start with this, just because it's pretty simple. But this way, you guys get two different installs. Sadly, I don't have AM4 for you guys. But uh, it's pretty much the same as LJ uh, 11.5X. You got a back plate, put the screws through. Good deal. So X99 and X299, it's the same. It's 2011 V3 socket. So it's all the same. You just use these posts. So you get two different sets of posts. One for the back plate version and then one for the X99 and X299. Uh, and uh, all you do is you take your little posts and you screw these in. I can get you a little close-up shot here more. But if anybody has X99 or X299, you know what I'm talking about. This is how you mount your coolers. So let me get a good angle going here. Hello, Mr. Real Rodimus. But uh, so now I'm a little bit awkward because I'm like behind the camera. But that's okay. I probably shouldn't have had the RAM in here, but it'll work. So you just screw these in because uh, with X99 and X299, or just 2011 V3 in general, it... Uh, already has like a little back plate with some threads in it so uh, half the work is already done for you but this will probably be the first block I tested on the test bench if you guys saw in the group last week I posted a poll about like which blocks I should uh, test because now I got this velocity block uh, Kibon Matt's gonna let me borrow an Evo I think uh, and then I have a few other bits power blocks whatnot and thermal take off or descend a block so I honestly already have a good lineup going, but I'm going to thermal test all the blocks and just compare them uh, once I get this test bench up and running, hopefully in the next couple weeks here. And uh, we'll see how they all stack up because this is pretty cool. It's a new block from EK. Not sure if it's supposed to be significantly better or worse than the older models, but uh, it's pretty cool. Thank you for the follow. That uh, is sucker. I don't know. I can't read it. It's so small. But I appreciate the follow. Thank you. Who makes EVGA's GPU water block for like the hydro cover? Uh, I forget. I think they m make them in house. I don't know. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. That's the same mounting system as the limited edition Evo blocks. This one. This is just the XI9. This works the same as all the other Evo blocks. They're all the same. But you get your posts in. Up next is the thermal paste. Everybody's favorite part. So, uh, actually, I, I do have a little bag, I think. So what I usually do is, you guys can hate on it all you want, but what I'm going to do here, and this is a Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, so they actually send you a little tube 
of Hydronaut with it, which is actually great thermal paste too. I just prefer Cryonaut, and it's what I'm going to be using in the testing of all these blocks. So I got to keep it even. Uh, and I don't have a bunch of Hydronaut, I have a bunch of Cryonaut. So that's what we're going to be using for the tests. But on Hank's block, I think I'll just put the little included bit on there because that's even, that's great thermal paste too. But what I'm going to do here is a little fun thing called spreading it. And I got a little baggie. So what I always do is I just put a little baggie on my finger. And then you can kind of just go ahead and spread it. Or you can usually, Thermal Grizzly actually usually does come with spatulas. And those sometimes work too. Just depends on your preference, I guess. This baggie isn't maybe as ideal, but... You can get where I'm going with it. I'm going to try a spatula. The cryo knot is, it's almost like taffy. That's what I feel like it's most similar to, is a taffy. So if you know what that feels like, that's what it's like to spread this stuff. So it's not exactly the easiest. And I think we're actually going to get a lot more going here. X99 is actually a pretty decent size CPU. Compared to 11.5x. Sure, glob some more on. I can't wait for you guys to comment on my thermal paste application method. But it's not going to change. And this is the most easily repeatable as well for the most part. For when testing comes along. I mean, for Hank's little chip. The, the small chips aren't quite as bad to just do like whatever you want to do your rice or whatever size you guys call it these days to use but uh, for a larger chip I kind of like to make sure we get it all covered this stuff is really fun to spread though honestly like AS5 and stuff is way easier to spread than this I just definitely Prefer, prefer some cryo knot to AS5. Even if it is a pain in the boot to uh, spread. It just like wipes itself off. It's almost like you'd want to like heat it up so it's more liquidy and less pasty. But it's just look at that. It like just wipes clean off the CPU. That's why sometimes the bag is better than the spatula, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we need two spatulas. Should we see how long it takes to do thermal paste? Okay. Oh, it's super easy to spread, though. Yeah, it's super easy. Not quite. This is one of the hardest pastes to spread, like I said, to be honest. Not that it's a bad paste. It's one of my favorite thermal pastes. Just not for applying it. I like it for its performance. Here, look at that. Come on. It likes to stick to the spatula better than it does the CPU. Which is why the spatula isn't always the best method. But we're almost there. How did the Verge apply its uh, thermal paste? Because that method, I think, was probably the best. <laughs> if you guys want to go watch a video on how to apply thermal paste. But I think we're good enough there. It's covering 90% of the dye here. And what you can always do is just put like a little drop in the middle. Because too much thermal paste is not really ever a problem. I mean, too, too much is, but... You guys know what I'm saying. So there we go. We got the block. And actually, now that I think about it, yeah, actually, this the way that EK, because with EK, when you're mounting your block, one thing to make sure is you get the in and out right. So they have them labeled on the velocity block here with little arrows. You got in on the left and then out on the right here. The in is typically more in the center of the block. Out's on the edge. So if you, you're you running your tubes, you already have your plan on how you run your tubes, and you got everything all figured out, make sure you got your in and your out 
in the right way because like once you get it all in there and then you realize it's the wrong way it's a lot of fun to go and try to redo so just be mindful of that so there we go you just put it on the post it'll squish down the thermal paste we'll get rid of that cable in a little bit but all you do is you take your four springs put them on the posts here just like so and you go ahead and you screw this bad boy down. You can do four little thumb screws here. This one's starting. But yeah, if you guys checked out last week, we had these featured on our product stream. And we actually had one taken apart and stuff. If you guys don't know much about the EK Supremacy CPU block or not supremacy but velocity obviously I mean it takes knowledge of the supremacy too but uh, the new design is that it doesn't have a separate plastic like jet plate or distribution plate whatever they called it before I'm not quite sure and this screws being a pain in the butt to start for some reason but uh, now it's just a solid uh, plastic top well you get plexi or acetal or nickel whatever option you may pick it's just that's a solid piece with the like it just directs the flow they still have a jet plate in there still the same metal metal jet plate design almost looks like a razor blade to a certain degree but uh, that's still in there so you got that but otherwise it's one solid piece which seems a lot better but <laughs> if your webcam won't focus tell it to sober up yeah I'll route this RGB cable in a second. So you just gotta tighten these up. Uh, approximately how far is a great question. I usually just go till it's actually pretty difficult to turn with just my fingers. It doesn't have to be like insanely tight. I would not get out your pliers for this. But just make sure you do them evenly. I'm doing the two corners at the same time and that's probably pretty good. So not hard at all with the RGB cable. I think I'll just go like this. We'll go straight up and out right next to the ram here you could go like around this way too if you wanted i guess go up and out there i think this will be fine though and then i'll be able to put it through that little hole and it yeah if you get it underneath here you won't even see it when the lights are off okay so there you go there's one installed x9 is pretty easy as long as you don't take forever on the thermal paste Mr. Byron said run the RGB cable between the posts and the cold plate. Oh, so like underneath there? Yeah, you could definitely do that. I guess just for the quickness of it, I'll just do that for now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got some options, especially with boards with fancy heat sinks and stuff. You can usually, you know, route it underneath them. So that's kind of nice. But here we go, one down. We got Hanks to go now leave that guy right there so uh, I got the 970 Evo there too so we can install that but we got this ROG Strix B360 gaming no the, yeah it does say gaming motherboard uh, ready to go this is for this little MITX build that we're gonna do but before the build comes we gotta install some stuff of course so let's pull this little guy out this thing is adorable by the way it's just a little tiny motherboard. <laughs> but I suppose we can do it on the anti-static paper. There we go. So uh, there it is in all its glory. Like I said, we'll do the M.2 as well. Save that for last. I guess I haven't opened up the CPU yet. Need my razor. Oh my lord, it's tiny. Yeah, it's pretty cute. I can see why Hank bought two. My grandma always used to tell me to buy two if they're small. Is this even the right? Oh, I'm cutting the wrong side. Sorry, Hank. I hope you don't care about your 87 iron K box. I don't think he does. He already said I could keep the 2080 box, which I'm pretty pumped about. That looks pretty. It's actually funny. I was going to get the 2080 out and uh, put it on the board just to compare it. Like, that thing is massive more like flaming 
What is Hank doing with the spare one? I already sent it back. He did that by accident. Apparently, you don't want to leave Hank alone too long with the Amazon Prime account at home. He'll order two of everything. Which is quite unnecessary. So, there we go. We got the 8700K here. Cute little guy. I think we can bend some pins putting them in. I hope not. Thank you. Should I throw the cover? I'm totally going to throw the cover, guys. Where? There's no arrows on I mean, I'm pretty sure it's down. Oh, there it is. There's no arrows on the board. I'm used to there always being, like, something right there. But. Always double check just to make sure, boys and girls. Here we go. She's in. And then get that. Here we go. You guys ready for this? What do we do with this? <laughs> oh, God. I had to. I'll pick it up later. I swear to God. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. I have to. That's like sacrilege. There we go. Okay. Guys, don't throw that away. Okay. Moving forward. We got the block right here. Uh, and like I said, they actually come with Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut, which is some great paste. They used to use like cheaper stuff, but then they upgraded to the good stuff. So I was pretty pumped to see that, to actually basically get everything you need ready to go in your box for your block. No, you need that. I knew it'd piss somebody off. I picked it up, don't worry. Cat, what's up, cat? I'm sorry, we're installing EK blocks. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy anyways. It's nice to see you join on Facebook. But Hank got the Supremacy Velocity, or not, I keep saying Supremacy. It's been around for so long. Uh, the Velocity RGB Nickel Plexi. So, same as I had. But uh, we're going to be using the 11.5X mounting system. So whether you get your hardware, bunch of hardware, underneath the package foam though, is where the rest of your stuff is, which we didn't use last time. Z270 Gaming has one. This one's Z370. No, it's B360. Whatever that is. <laughs> okay. So, we need the back plate. This is why I don't like 11.5x, even though it's pretty much what I would have to say probably nearly half the gamers use, unless you guys are all on AM4 now. But even that takes a back plate, so suck it. Um. We're getting there. Insert for your CPU installation. Stuff. Yeah. Don't you know about the stuff? So I'm pretty sure you popped this out. You know what is weird though? Is that this actually, these blocks didn't come with instructions. Which, I mean, I don't really need them, but I was pretty sure that all of their previous blocks come with instructions. I'm hoping. The RTX block came with instructions. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I could figure it out, but GPUs, especially brand new expensive ones, I like to be careful and make sure I'm doing it right. Always read the instructions, folks. It's not a bad idea. So there you go. You put the rubber on on first, and then you go ahead and do the, the metal guy. I believe that's the right way. I think you could do it the other way, but I don't know why. Yeah, that seems dumb. I'm not going to do that. We're going to go with that. Well, like I said, you get all this hardware here. So you dump this out. And you find what you need. So for this one, we need, let's see, it should be these posts. Yeah, because this is threaded underneath here. So now we get to do the fun part of flipping it over without letting it move. And I'm actually just going to hold on to it. So uh, these ones are different than the X99 or X299 LGA2011. It's uh, got a little smooth spot, not fully threaded end, which is the end that goes into your back plate. If you can get it to thread. Here we. Oh, I knew I was gonna miss something. 
So, before you actually put it in the back plate, they give you little nylon washers. You want to put that up against your motherboard. I don't think it would be the end of the world if you didn't, but it kind of protects your motherboard a little bit. And I believe it helps with the height of the post as well. So there you go. There's one on. You just thread her on like that. Grab another post and another little washer. Make sure that's lined up. And we'll get this guy on. Round edges down. Yeah, that's what I did. Did your block? I saw you got one too, Byron. Did yours come with instructions? Mine didn't. Is the motherboard box there? Is an insert to install? Oh, is there? I. Who uses a tool for inserting their CPU? I have never. That Verge thing was the first time I've ever seen that. And I can't get this to thread. <laughs> you couldn't tell. I'm getting upset now. It just wants to go in sideways as well. So, for anybody else in Sony, you just take your time. You don't want to strip these threads. But there we go. I got it. It's just a little finicky. So, make sure you're doing it properly. With everything, as far as CPUs and especially water cooling, just take your time, folks. Patience is your friend. D270 Gaming in the ITX here has one. Well, I guess I didn't pull everything out of the motherboard box. I guess that's what you're supposed to do, but I didn't. Because, like I said, I don't really need a CPU. I've never used one before. I'd probably mess up the installation by using one. Like, you're just adding more parts to the puzzle now. You got too many tools in the box, man. This guy is being difficult, too. Come on, last post. I know you can do it. Maybe. I don't want to strip it. There we go. Okay. So, make sure they're all nice and tight. Toy, 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 toy. And then, we'll go ahead and we'll get out our Thermal Grizzly Hydro Knot, is what comes with it. Which is actually going to leave me the trivia question tonight. Because you're going to win a bottle of Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot, actually. Small, yeah. And actually the bottle you win is the small one, the one I linked down below. But uh, the question is, because you guys know how this works, trivia question, what you guys got to do is answer in chat, first person to answer is the winner. So I am watching all of the chats right now. So the first one, person to answer is going to win a little tube of Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot, because you can never have too much Cryo Knot laying around, and I think you guys like that. The question is though, what was the predecessor to the EK Supremacy Evo? What was the predecessor to the EK Supremacy Evo? Matt is the answer. Nori, you can't win again. You can't win that many times in a row. I'm sorry. Even if you're a good guesser. <laughs> Supremacy? Nope. <laughs> Close. Not really. It's the predecessor to the Supremacy Evo. Velocity. No, pre predecessor. You guys are thinking about the successor. It's not that. I'm trying to watch the chat and do the wrong pace now. No, not the predator either. This is actually a good question. You guys got like my tough ones the last like three weeks in a row, like on an instant. I thought those were tough. There we go. It's the MX. And Jason Anderson got it. Right before Carolina Customs. Good job. So, <laughs> there you go. It's the Supremacy MX. We still have them on our website. You can check them out. They're a pretty old block now at this point. But, plan on also throwing one of those in the lineup. So, as you'll see one compared. But, here we go with Thermal Paste. We're just going to do... We're going to do a nice little cross, I think. We're just going to do a nice little thin line, just like that, and we'll do a little bit on each side. And you guys can comment all you want on how terrible you think this might be, okay? Have at it in the comments. Don't forget to like or dislike this video. Either one's actually great as far as YouTube's concerned. 
They just like to see people click buttons. <laughs> so click away. Woo boy. So yeah, Jason, you can message me. It's been a while since you won, right? Oh, key step that I had already done on the other one is remove this. If you don't, thermals are cool, but not really. And once again, you just slide it down onto the posts to squish it a little bit, make sure that thermal paste goes out. Then you get your four springs one more time. I can find them all. Put them on your posts, you get your thumb screws, and you start screwing it on down. So overall it's pretty easy, I think. Uh, X99 or X29 LJ2011 is a lot easier, but at the end of the day, it's always, almost always easier than an air cooler. Every air cooler I've ever installed always has some kind of trick to it, and it's sometimes frustrating. So, in some ways, water cooling is easy. Thermal not grizzly. Close. <laughs> Thanks, Matt, Hank, Garrett, and rest of PPC staff, says Mr. Jason. Sheldon joined on Facebook. What's up, Sheldon? How's it going, buddy? So, pretty much finishing up here. We've almost got this last guy installed, and I guess I'll install the 970 Evo 2. That'll be your bonus for tonight. See if I can screw that up. I've never used a fancy heatsink thing like this before. So, who knows? Maybe I'll plug in the RGB on this one again too, so you guys can see that. The teeny tiny board, the block installed. Oh yeah, here. Okay, those are pretty much tight. For this one's RGB cable, I think I'd just go like this. There is an RGB header over there, but that is, yeah, that's addressable. It says ADD header. I think that's all it's got, so we're going to run it to a cable mod thing like I did for the other one. Uh, but there you go, that'd be a pretty easy routing. And here you go, here's a little bonus for you guys. This is going to be hilarious. Uh, so, check this out. Uh, so, we'll get the box out. Just to do this properly. But, here we go. Put that right there. Oh, yeah. It's a big card. It doesn't want to go in. Oh, it would help if I had it over the box properly. There we go. Look at that. Wow. That's going to tip over for sure. <laughs> but there you have it, folks. A 2080 on a MITx board. It looks awesome. <laughs> you cannot even see this board. Like, look at this. Oh, my. Yeah, hopefully we get Hank's 28 Ti it shipped, and uh, I'll be doing a block install video. Wow, that is really hard to hit, that switch, the latch. Um, I'll be doing the block install video for the RTX GPU block, the, the vector block from EK. I can't even hit that button, or the lever, whatever you want to call it. What is it going to be? This little ruler hurts. There we go. Wow. They make that difficult. The ram slots. The end of the ram slots hit it. Or it makes it impossible to put your finger in there. So there we go. There's that for size comparison. Instead of a banana, we'll use a RTX 2080. But last but not least, like I said, we can do this little guy real quick here. You guys can see if I can screw this up. I told Hank I was gonna break something tonight. So I guess we gotta we gotta keep trying, folks. When did the 970 come out? I feel like it wasn't that long ago. I still have a 950 Pro in my in my personal build, so I'm way behind apparently. So far behind. Oh, it's so adorable. 
It'll be adorable for an adorable board. So how do we do it? This is just a little little Phillips. Okay, you got one of those. Like last year, yeah. See, I'm like super far behind. It came out last year. Let's see, here's a nice little screwdriver head. Oh, do you guys want to see this? Oh, that's not that. This should peel though, right? This will definitely peel off. There we go. It's starting. Man, I'm so good at peel porn. I should ask for a raise just for how good I am at doing peel porn. Wow, that feels like it wants to strip with that one. We're going to use a different one. Which is a better one? I fix it kit to the rescue for sure. There we go. It looks like it just takes two little screws here. One. Don't lose those. They seem like they might be hard to come by. But uh, let me know, guys. I do plan on streaming the RTX block install too, but I also plan on for both of these, the Velocity and the uh, RTX, to make a video out of this. So let's take off this little. Yeah, I don't know why it has like a number on it, but uh, and a barcode. Hopefully, you don't need that. But we'll take our nice little 970 Evo here now. Oh, I'm going to have to go in the motherboard box now because the screw isn't in there. Here we go. Where did I put the motherboard? Oh, it's on it. Silly me. I almost lost it. Large thermal pad under that. Get thee to a sleepery. <laughs> what is that? Only way to find out. So, let's see what's in this motherboard box. How many goodies does Asus give you now? Look at this. What is all this? What the heck? Oh, it's a Wi-Fi thing. That's cool. Jeez. We got stickers. Oh, my Lord. Look at all the stickers. Oh, my. I'm so excited for the stickers. I hope Hank doesn't want them. I'm definitely going to have to use all of the stickers so seriously guys where'd you put the screw oh we got it I think right isn't this it yeah it comes with an extra standoff too apparently broken pieces oh Wi-Fi it's there's nothing broken there's just a lot of stuff in there <laughs> why does Hank catch such big fish but build such small PCs I'll have to ask him that. That's a really good question, Ronnie. It will have to stay forever. <laughs> yeah, leave the, the... The 2080 is actually going in here, but it'll have a block, so I think it'll still be pretty funny to see, even in the build. Why is that? That screw hole is, like, already damaged. I didn't do that. You guys saw me just pull that off. There's video proof. There we go. That's all there is to it. So we put that back on. You cover up the pretty 970. Oh, wow, that's really sticky. I wonder, you're not actually supposed to take the sticker off, right? Like, I've heard people, like, debate about that. Or even, like, ask why there's such a weird sticker. But I'm going to leave it on. It shouldn't make a difference. Here we go. Unscrew and... Number two screw. There it is. So, we've got half the stuff installed. I forgot to grab the RAM from Matt, but I'll be seeing him again next weekend. Because if you guys saw anything from this last weekend, I was down there working on his R6 build. So, we're working on finishing that up in the next week. The Mobo is Hank and the GPU is the fish. No, do not take off the sticker on Samsung. Yeah, the sticker, oh, the sticker's lined with copper. That's fancy. That's really fancy. Thank you for that. 
Nori says the sticker is lined with copper, so it's like a thermal sticker. I bet these aren't thermal stickers, but they still look cool. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, they're cable. Rob, cable labels. That's cool. Okay, so moving on. Like I said, this next weekend you guys will be able to check us out finishing that build, me and Matt finishing up his R6 build. I'll grab a bunch of stuff from him. I gotta get the RAM for this build. Like I said, I'm gonna borrow an Evo for testing so we can play, compare these velocity blocks. Hopefully we get that stream going in the next couple weeks. That'll probably be a few streams. But look forward to that. Appreciate everybody who voted and all that good stuff and gave me some feedback on Facebook. Please continue to do so. You can join our Facebook in its link in the description below. Uh, check out the EK Velocity Blocks. Thank you, EK, for sending these. They sent both mine and Hank's to us. So thank you, Attila. Really appreciate that. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to put them to good use. I don't know about Hank, but I'll, I know I will. So I won't speak for him, though. <laughs> if, you let it, if you look at an angle, you'll see the lining. Interesting. Well, now it's covered up and you'll never see it again. So, so sad. <laughs> I believe you, though. But... If you guys are going to stick around, like I said, this weekend, have a bunch of more R6 water cooling content. Hopefully have that loop ball finished up for Matt. Uh, as far as the rest of this week goes, RTX block install uh, on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, Thursday will be another new product stream, more than likely. So just stay tuned, guys. Join our Discord. It's another great place to stay in touch. Ask any questions, any kind of help you need. Give us feedback. It's all good stuff. But thank you, everyone, who came out tonight. Thanks, Jason, for answering the super tough trivia question. Better luck next time, the rest of you. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys then. Have a good night. Happy water cooling. Happy modding.